What's going on everyone and welcome to Movie Emporium's movie review of One Night in Miami. The newest film from actress turned director Regina King. Uh, before we begin, hey, if you like my channel, awesome, hit the subscribe button to join Movie Emporium. Hit that notification bell at the top to find out what's coming next. If you like any of these videos, awesome, hit the like button as well as commenting below on any videos you watch, including this one. So this story, One Night in Miami, which is based off the famous play from Kent Powers, follows four high profile African American individuals as they circumnavigate this world in 1964, dealing with the racism and the ideology between white and black. And after a fight uh, that Muhammad Ali has with Sonny Liston in 1964 in Miami, these four individuals, which include Muhammad Ali, Malcolm X, uh, Sam Cooke, and Jim Brown, actually meet up in Malcolm X's uh, hotel room and have a almost theological, ideological discussion about how they view this world that is a very racist society and the ideas that are being presented are very raw and emotional and you see these characters basically fight back with one another but it shows the kind of differing nature of what one person believes against another and so this movie which is very representative of the kind of ideology and the theology of what's going on in today's society really kind of breaks down the nuts and bolts of what four high profile individuals go through in a day to by day basis because even though they're very successful very respected very well known people like jim brown people like sam cook people like muhammad ali can be as famous as they want but you know there's a scene in this movie where jim brown is talking to a, a gentleman who's played by bo bridges and he attempts to enter his house and the n-word is used and it comes to the realization to jim brown just how much he is not respected in this world and society it's the same thing with sam cook in the copacabana so it's that ideology that this movie represents and plays around and really feels like a play being brought onto the screen. So you could literally sit in the audience and feel like you're watching a true to life play. But because this is a fictional setting and because this is a fictional story, this actually didn't happen. So what these guys who I'm sure talked to one another, what they believed, what they thought, you know, may have not been 100% correct. So there is that leaning ideology going into the movie. So when I first heard about this movie, when I first started hearing rumblings about this movie, um was through like i think venice film festival or something like that it might have premiered somewhere else but i remember hearing from venice film, Fe film festival through twitter the only things i kept hearing about this movie were actress turned director regina king is in top form i hear kingsley ben adir as malcolm x is incredible i hear leslie Odom jr as sam cook is in incredible i hear that this movie has emotionally raw power to it i hear it takes on you know, the idea of racism and the idea of the you know, Black Lives Matter, the idea of everything the African-American community, community is going through, especially in this time frame in 1964, is so raw and emotional that it packs a huge punch, uh, you know, notwithstanding with, you know, Cassius Clay in this movie. So I was truly intrigued by it. You know, I like the fact that, you know, if a movie can move you like that, like what Nomad Land did for me, I excited so at, with the hampton film festival they were showing this movie i bought my ticket for it and i just finished watching the movie and i will say this everything that you hear about this movie except for there are small amounts of people that don't like this movie but everything you hear about this movie is 100 percent correct this is a tour de force for regina king as a director um it's a very small movie it's a very personal movie it's a very quiet movie but it is filled with four individuals, it is filled with four characters that are not only strong-minded characters, but they are passionate characters, they are people of substance, and they are some of the most well-rounded characters you will see in a movie this year. Um, I give every credit in the world for how good Regina King is behind the camera. It's kind of like Ben Affleck, watching Ben Affleck direct Gone Baby Gone or something like that. There's just something that the it just happens it's like a lightning in the bottle situation i think regina king has learned from watching barry jenkins or watching any of these directors she's worked with and just kind of given her soul and vision for a movie that is going to be an oscar contender when it comes out you know between this and nomadland it's and there, I, there's still other films i haven't seen but i think between this and nomadland i think this is 
the true contenders for the Best Picture Academy Award. And it also wouldn't work unless you didn't have a great script. And Kent Powers, who is, like I said, was a screenwriter as well as it being based off his play. This movie tr through and through is a stage play in uh, film feature form. But what Kent Powers has brought to the screen, what he is going to bring to the masses, especially with this, and apparently Soul is really good because he wrote Soul from for Pixar, is a level of character development that you don't see very often in characters or real life people that are presented on the screen. I think Kent Powers' script is truly uh, riveting. I think it's truly powerful. I think there are scenes in this movie that he has written that just come off the screen and a tour de force, a just mesmerizing feel and sense that, you know, really truly makes you appreciate what can happen in cinema and film. Um, the words that are being brought off the screen, his like emotional resonance in the movie uh, as a writer, it, it bleeds so nicely and bleeds so reverently. It's just such a good, well-rounded script. That, you know, once again, like <laughs> he might win an Oscar for this movie unless he wins an Oscar for Soul. Uh, but this is a good year for Kemp Powers and it's a good year for the these particular types of films because these are powerful movie movies. And this is a top notch level of, uh, of writing and directing. So and then when we get into the characters of this movie, we have Kingsley ben who plays Malcolm X, who I hope gets an Oscar nomination because his resonance and his his power in this movie and his use of just language and how he speaks, how he represents Malcolm X in this movie is, a, once again, I keep saying tour de force, but it is a sight to behold. He is the best part about this movie. I'm not saying, you know, the other three characters aren't just as riveting to watch, but there is something magnetic. There is something true. There is something substantial to his character that it is is heartbreaking when you see what he has to go through he was a very controversial figure in the 60s but i believe his heart was always in the right place and it really shows here you know there are scenes in this movie where he talks to his wife and it feels like a whole different person than what you saw on camera in real life and i think this is what makes you know whether he was truly like that. I'm assuming he was, but it really kind of gives you a new dimension to his character. And it's um it's an amazing portrayal. Yeah, you, know, you know, we've seen yes, we've seen Denzel Washington do an amazing portrayal of Malcolm X, but I don't know. There's to watch him and how he confronts the situation at hand, how he confronts Sam Cooke when they disagree, how he kind of mends and confronts Muhammad Ali, Cassius Clay's character, and Jim Brown, how the back and forth go. It's it's inc it's an incredible performance. Performance. And once again, if it doesn't get an Oscar nomination and a, a very big talent of great acting going on this year for actors, um, would be kind of devastating because it truly is a, a remarkable performance. And then he's going up through most of this movie against Sam Cooke, who is played by Leslie Odom Jr. Sam Cooke's a famous uh, musician. And Leslie Odom Jr. has already proven his powers as an amazing singer and actor in, of course, Hamilton. And it's no different here. He is giving another great performance, another maybe possible Oscar nomination performance. Amazing to watch him go through these trials and tribulations, whether it be the Copacabana or be on a local network station or just having ideological thoughts and decisions that completely differ from what Malcolm X has. And it's not until like the very end of this movie that you really truly understand why these two people really respect one another because they're always fighting in this movie. It's crazy and just insane. But Leslie Odom Jr. just gives a well-rounded, well-respected performance, and it's incredible. And then you have Eli Gore as Cassius Clay and Aldous Hodge as Jim Brown. And this movie, like I said, is set up with the Muhammad Ali, uh, Sonny Liston fight. And I think you also get a very nuanced performance from Eli Gore for as Cassius Clay. He was always a, a very um, heavy persona, a very outlandish persona, but you really get to see him as most like uh, deep and thought provoking in this movie. Um, he's not like the best character in this movie, but I really enjoyed what Eli Gore was doing as Cassius Clay because 
you still get to see a little bit of heart. You get to see the idea of him becoming a Muslim, becoming Muhammad Ali as we eventually know him. And I think it's a great performance. I think Aldis Hodge as Jim Brown and watching the scene earlier, like I said, with Bo Bridges, I think it's a great character. I think it's a great moment, but like Cassius Clay, I think there's some great moments that are going on, but it really is kind of put in a place with what Leslie Odom Jr. and of course, uh, Kingsley, uh, Deer, uh, Kingsley Benadir are doing. And so you put four, all these four characters together and you got some of the most riveting and interesting and character motivations and dialogue and everything is just thrown in a pot and it's well-rounded and you got like a great bowl of soup. It's it's an impressive cast and an impressive thing to watch. And like I said, Lance Reddick pops up in here and he's just fun to watch. He doesn't really do much in the movie, but um, overall, this movie is fantastic. This movie is incredible. Um, I hope it gets all the Oscar love that it deserves because it definitely deserves a lot. And uh, it'll be interesting to see but what happens between this and, uh, of course, uh, Nomadland when it comes to Oscar season. But I can't highly recommend this enough. I can't highly, you know, recommend the fact that this movie is just incredible. So, so congratulations, Regina King. Congratulations to the cast. Congratulations, Kent Powers. I can't wait to see Soul. Damn it, I have to wait till Christmas to see Soul, but I can't wait to see it. And, uh, yeah, that'll do it for my uh, take on, of course, One Night in Miami. But with that said, if you've seen One Night in Miami, let me know what you think of it. Did you like it? Did you not like it? All that good stuff. I know there's a few people that didn't like the movie, which is perfectly all right. Uh, but are you interested also to see this movie if you haven't seen it? Are you looking forward to it you know like i said it's a it's a great movie so uh but anyways thank you so much for watching hit the subscribe button to join movie emporium hit that notification bell at the top to find what's coming next if you like this video awesome hit the like button and uh we'll see you guys on the next video peace out